Okay, our next speaker is, is Michael Pinanen. Uh, as an NSM enthusiast, he started using Puppet in 2011 to manage the growing national or nationwide, uh, worldwide, sorry, sensor grid at General Electric. He built the Bro Puppet module uh, available for download in the Puppet Forge. He now works for Vigilant Technology Solutions, where he designs, improves, automates sensor deployment uh, that protects many businesses across the United States. Welcome, Michael. So, um, yeah, like she said, I started using Puppet in uh, 2011, and I kind of started dabbling with Bro in 2011 when I came to the Bro workshop. Um, I didn't start putting Bro in production use case until about a year ago, and that was at General Electric. We already had a, uh, um, well, for, for one, does everyone know what Puppet is? It's, it's an automation framework, just in case you don't know. But anyway, at, uh, so at General Electric, we had uh, about 450 sensors out there. And uh, they, we were already running on an NSM solution. So when I went to go add Bro, it wasn't really all that hard, because Puppet pretty much just installed it for me on all those sensors. Uh, I didn't have to log into them. You know, I log into a few of them. Um, you know, just a test, things like that, but it really makes things, you know, easy, especially when you're dealing with multiple. Um, I mean, even if, I don't know, probably, if, even if I only had one sensor, I'd probably still use Puppet. Um, some of the reasons I chose Puppet, um, I think, was probably because of the community. Um, it seemed, I, I was going back and forth in the beginning when I, when I went to go do it, and I thought about using Chef, but then I ended up just sticking with Puppet. Um, they have really good documentation, and you know, they're on IRC, and it's, it's, there's a lot of resources out there um, for you to be able to figure out how to use it. They have a free version, and then they have a paid version. Um, I use the free version, but the paid version gives you like a better dashboard and things like that, if you're not familiar with it. So, Installing Bro with Puppet, this is basically all you need to do um, with my Puppet module. It's this hard. Um, yeah, my five-year-old daughter could probably install Bro. So this is basically the very minimal, though. This is this will this will this will install Bro in standalone um, on in this monitor ETH two. You can have it do PFRing and things like that, and I'll show you. I'll, I'm going to demo a bunch of stuff, but this is basically all you need to do to make Bro install on a sensor. And you just put this in a manifest file, include it in your node file or Hira or however you're doing it, and let it go. So one thing about Puppet is it likes packages. Um, it can install, upgrade, remove packages very easily. So, you know, with that being said, you know, Bro doesn't have a, 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 a repo, uh, but you should have one. So I would recommend if you're going to set up Puppet in your environment and install, you know, sensors, I would have your own private, you know, repo server, whether, whether it's Debian or, you know, Red Hat or whatever. That way, Puppet has an easy way to, you know, grab your packages, you know, because you're going to need things like probably other ones too, like PFRing or whatever you're using. I use PFRing, so um, it's extremely scalable. So I had all my my Puppet servers at G, at GE were actually in Cincinnati, Ohio, and. I could configure a sensor in you know, Australia, China, uh, you name it. I mean, GE had locations everywhere, um, still do. And Puppet didn't have, have a problem. Some of, the, you know, some of the slower links, that it may have taken like a minute to actually do the full Puppet run, but mo for the most part, it, it had no issues. It was really good. All right, so I'm gonna show you I have a VM I set up here that we can go through. Actually, let me show you some stuff. This is the actual uh, Puppet Forge. 
Um, so what Puppet did, they set up this forge, and you can actually, from the command line from your Puppet server, install modules from people. Um, and that's basically all you have to do right there. Just puppet module install, Panaman Bro, and you'll have my Bro module and all the dependencies. There's a few de dependencies that'll install, but I have a couple other modules. Um, and you know, you can search through here, there's all kinds of stuff. You can, a lot of times I'll, I'll go through here and I'll download some stuff and you know, I'll, I'll look at their code or I'll, you, I'll reference some of their code. So, this is what I posted in the first slide. This is a, a basic minimum standalone bro. Um, I have an option too. So let's say you don't have a, a, a repo and or you installed your packages from source on your sensor or whatever. You don't you just don't have one. Um, you can set the package source to none. By default, my module expects that there'd be like a repo somewhere and it can just install a package. Um, but you can set it to none and it won't care then, then it'll, it'll just manage all your configs for you. And I'll demo that. My uh, VM, I had to do that. So here's kind of a bro cluster setup. Um, very minimum. You could change, you know, have the manager be, you know, whatever, one host, and then your worker, a different host, or whatever. Um, you can pretty much configure all this. So you just have to have type as cluster. Um, default is standalone, so if you don't have that, that won't work. Um, your, you know, your network, this will, this will basically edit your node config and put in uh, your, your home nets, basically. You, and it's, a, it's an array, so you can put as many in as you want. So here's an example of pfring. Um, basically, you just tell the method pfring. Um, you can bind CPUs. So, so what this does is it's an array, but it's really just looks for the first, your first thread and your last thread. So what that will do is it will bind CPUs one, two, three, and four. Um, you don't want to put any more in there; it would break. I mean, I, I mean, you have more than four, but you don't want, you always want to have just have two uh, numbers in your array. So if you don't want to bind cores, you can just, you know, say I want seven CPUs and let the operating system handle it, and it will, you do it this way with the procs. And you don't need a special, you don't need to specify procs when you have the CPUs, because it, it'll just count, or it knows. So I haven't tested mirror, uh, mirror comp cards, but I'm pretty sure that's how you do it in Bro, and my module should be able to handle it. If anyone you know, uses mirror comp cards and tests out this module, let me know. Um, so we can edit, we can have some custom local Bros um, for, you know, on a per sensor name basis. Let's say I have you can have a global one that all sensors will, will get, um, or you can, have, you can also have one that, that are based on host names. So I could also have this as being the host name, underscore local.bro file sitting on my Puppet server, and as long as you set the site policy to, to uh, actually, that's the wrong one, <laughs> sorry. This is, yeah, no wait, I, that, that's right. So you can, you can set it to host name and it will actually look for the host name first. And then it will grab uh, uh, a, a, a custom file. So that, that, what that enables you to do is you can have, one, say you have sensors that maybe you run different bro scripts on or whatever and you wanna have a different local bro. You can, it's, very, it's flexible that way. So. All right, the, uh, this is how I kind of I organize our, sh there's a script directory. Let me, I'm just gonna bring up the VM, actually. Let me make more sense. All right, everyone see that all right?
All right. So just for an example of Puppet managing a file, I, so I made that awesome MOTD. So I can gone. So this is my puppet server is also my my bro sensor. You probably don't want to do that in real life. I put my MOTD back. Yay. So, you gotta remember too, this is a MacBook Air, so sometimes it'll be a little slower than if you had a real machine. Let's see. So, th this is where you'll wanna put any like custom bro scripts. What Puppet's gonna do is it will. Whatever you throw in that directory, it will copy to every sensor. It doesn't mean that se that that bro sensor is going to load those scripts. It's just going to make sure they're on there. Um, your custom local bro will will you know is how you point to these. So, oops. So I, I kind of want everyone when I when I made this, I, I had to figure out how to best organize it. So what I'm doing is I. I want everyone to, when they use this, you don't have to do it this way, but to make a directory for your module. So I have one in here, my bro script. So I have an Intel one just for you know, demonstration. And in my Intel, I have my load bro file and then my that, so. You know, it. And my dat has uh, some an IP in it. One dot one dot one. It's bad. So, um, you know, it's just an example. So, this so anything you put in here, it's going to get put on the sen on the sensor, but it's not going to be loaded. And to get it loaded, you need to go in here. And you have custom ones. Um, so by default, it uses the default local.bro that is shipped with bro. I put that on here for two. This is two three. This module was updated a couple of days ago. So I have a custom one called handyman local.bro, and you can see at the bottom. I'm loading my Intel. So. Let's change my local dot bro, my site policy. Oops. It's always cool when it works. When it doesn't work, it's not cool. You see, it's like, oh, I changed my local dot bro. It modified the bro control config file, and then it's going to reschedule and reload bro. So I wrote um, basically I, I didn't like how Puppet had to manage bro control. So that's why you'll notice service. What's up, bro? Um, that is kind of like a wrapper for bro control that I, I, it's more puppet friendly. And there's also a wrapper for the brocron. So what happens is, oops. sometimes doing a bro control status and having puppet do it every time it checks in, let's say you have your sensor check in every 30 minutes or whatever. Um, instead of having to do a bro control status to check the status, because sometimes when you have, say you have like 10 bros running, your box is under high load, it, it can, sometimes I've seen it take like three minutes to, re, you know, bro control to return a status to me. 
Um, and that's not really accept acceptable for Puppet. So what I did was I made this little Brocron script that basically what it does is it, it uh, writes a file in DevSHM for bro state. And we'll put a zero or a one. If bro is running, it's a zero. If bro is not, it's one. Um, and Puppet will just read that file because it can, you know, reading a file is really easy to do. Um, makes Puppet faster. If that's a one, Puppet will then initiate an actual bro control status just to verify that bro is broke or whatever down it, some, for some reason. And then it will restart bro, and then it'll check another status, and then it will rewrite the file back in here and say, I'll put another zero or a one. So next, it's next Puppet run. So technically, you could be off by five minutes because this runs every five minutes. Um, your sensor could be, but it, it, it's, it's pretty reliable. I've not had really any issue doing it this way. And it, it actually makes Puppet and Bro to, you know, play along a lot nicer. Not saying Bro control's bad or anything. It's just, it's, it just works better this way. Yeah. That, that, doing something like that, if Bro just had a, a I call it like a cache file, really, you know? That's kind of what it is. But, yeah, without doing an actual bro control, though, you, sometimes you want to do a, a bro control. So, what's up, bro? It returns it, and you can actually So, see, what I was saying, I actually have to do it in checking the status. Um, Something else too, so I basically, if anything changes in the script, the script directory or bro control config, because I can't tell exactly every time what you're gonna do, so I basically will do, every time I do a restart, I'm doing an install, because just in case, you know, I don't know if you put new bro scripts in or whatever, and see if bro is running. And then, what's up bro? And that's all Puppet does, it just does what's up bro every time. So if I do a Puppet run now, bro is running, and it won't do anything. It was like, all right, everything's the way it's supposed to look, basically. It'll go fairly quick. Oh, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but uh, I was just curious for your uh, the status uh, script. Will it return a one or a zero if any of the workers, yeah. if that's your configured, are one, if one worker is blown up, it'll put a one. It'll, so it'll return a one if yeah. one of the workers is messed up. It has to be all of them for it to return a zero. Yeah, they all, everything's got to be good. Okay, okay, cool. I was just curious. Thanks. Pretty sure. I'll double test that. Though. I'm almost positive, though. <laughs> um, so, see, it's perfectly fine. I mean, I could just do bro control stop, but I want to use what's up bro because it writes everything into my dev SHM. Um, so. You can still use what's up bro to do statuses and things like that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't re like restart anything manually with it. I would use the what's up bro just because it puts the right cache file. Even if you didn't, the next Brocron that runs, it will check and put the put it in there anyway. So you'd be all right. So bro, it's like okay, now now I'll try it. Zero. Zero. So let me show you. All right. Some other config. Let's go through, I'm go through some of the configuration options. So normally you don't need to put as much. You'll see uh, modules. So I made a manifest and I call it Bro Sensor. Oops. Oh. So 
So you don't, you, what I tend to do is I'll make a manifest and with, that does a bunch of things for a sensor. So, and the, I actually did a couple, just, just to throw some things in there, I, I added, I have a thing called path munge, which, which adds a path um, to your box. And I installed PFRing, configured it with some default options. And then I'm doing bro. So in this little arrow, what that means is uh, it'll run PFRing and then it will do bro in that order. It, it, normally, if you don't do anything or have any dependencies, Puppet just kind of randomly, it'll go through all its manifests, but it doesn't do them in any specific order. And you, if you want to order things, you tell it to order it. Um, so I have a bunch of basically everything that was, that's in here, all my customized variables are in this manifest. Normally, all the default, the, most of the defaults are just fine. You don't need to actually add all these, um, but I just did it for this demonstration. So then I use Hira. If you don't know what Puppet is, and it's understandable, you're not gonna understand all this, but. So, in Hira, I kind of, you can override all the variables that I already have in that manifest. So if I wanted to change something, like that's how I changed the local.bro. So let's say, I want, let's say I don't, I don't want my site directory in the default for you know, the RPM. Let's say I want it in my home directory. You can change it. There could be many reasons for doing this. I actually have some. So I actually do that, and I have encrypted partitions, so any like Intel or whatever is always sitting on an encrypted disk, and you can have it that way. And I actually symlink the, uh, the running bro, the, the do not touch folder or whatever, that's uh, symlinked, so it's actually will be on the encrypted disk too. So we, in a minute, once this is done, I should have some Intel directory and stuff in my home directory. So you can see it right here. Also, too, there's some other things you can do with the scripts and stuff. If you don't want to see it change files, you just, just know that it was changed. You don't want to see what changed. You can do a show diff equals false. It's one of the nice little features. That way, if say you have something, I don't even, for some reason you had a password or something in a file, I don't know why you do that, but um, it wouldn't actually show up on the screen, which also would, means it wouldn't show up in the Puppet log. So. There it is. And I got my PM, PM level up, bro. Running and bro is running still. Good. Um, some other things that are kind of useful is you know you can change your log your log purge by default. I leave it disabled because I don't want to. I don't want bro to delete your logs if you didn't want them being deleted at all to begin with. Um, so. You know, I can put that to 30, and then it'll, it'll change the bro control. So it's basically disabling the disabled, with, you know, the pound sign and adding interval to 30. And you can do the same thing with the debug. If say you're having issues, you can, you know, debug, you can turn debug on one of your sensors with Puppet. It'll turn that on. Um, it's fairly configurable. And if there isn't an option that I'm not actually presenting for my bro control, you can override it. So, see right here, bro control by, is, is default. 
If you set it to the word custom, it will look for custom underscore bro control dot config. And just like, the, just like with the local dot bro, it does the same kind of thing. Or a host name underscore bro control dot config. I don't have that in my documentation, but it's, host name is also there. I think it's actually in the readme, though. I actually try to put little readmes in my modules. I need to make sure. Yep, see, host name, and then it'll look for a custom one. So this is how you can, again, have multiple bro control configs for different sensors. Most of the time, you're gonna have one, really. They're all gonna look the same. But you might have a situation. So I'm gonna do one more thing, since I'm getting a little lower on time. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna turn PF ring on on my uh, uh, little tiny MacBook Air. And I'll show you one thing that kind of, so this is the only issue I have with this module and kind of way Bro works is if you edit the node config and you change CPUs from, let's say I was at, so hold on, let's, wrong directory. So right here we're gonna use CPUs two and three. So let's say I have it at two and, I set it to two and three, and then I decided I want it to be on three and four. This is where it can get a little goofy. Um, so what happens is Puppet edits the node config and then research bro. Well, what happens is CPU two is this left in la la land out there and it's still running. So if you're gonna change CPUs, I recommend you jump on that box, shut down bro first, and then change it. So. Just like in my other demo, I'm gonna actually do the, this bind two cores that this thing doesn't really have. Oops. So like I said before, we gotta change the type from standalone to cluster. And methods already P of ring. And the CPUs, this is how you actually do an array in Hyra. It's YAML, Hyra's YAML. Uh, you can do JSON too, but this, is, this one's YAML. Basically yeah. YAML. And we sh I'm gonna actually stop, bro. It should be fine when it's in uh, standalone, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So Puppet always looks at, sees all your changes first and then before it starts restarting anything. And for, for those of you that are familiar with Puppet, you guys can probably get all this stuff, that's a, no big deal. But it's, it's really powerful, um, it really makes life easier. I, 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 and I build everything. I mean, I put IP tables, users, NTP, configs, I mean, you name it. The sensors basically, uh, we use, we run our sensors on CentOS, and uh, it's basically just a CentOS minimal, pretty much, with a Puppet agent on it, and we just run Puppet, have a few custom configurations for the the, uh, in the Hira, and it just builds, a set, builds it for us. And if anything ever crashes, it restarts it. You know. Not that bro crashes or anything. So, I'm gonna actually do a bro control status so you can see. Yay, I have bro control running with PF rain, and it's working. So, that being said, I don't really have anything else. Um, does any, you guys have any questions?
Mm. All right. Well, if you uh, want, oh, sorry. Uh, what if you workers are using different net? Uh, ETH, one is ETH one and one is ETH three. You could do that. So, you would basically add another row worker underneath this one. So make another one right underneath it and then just change the interface. So if I was to actually do it, um, so you have to have basically another bro worker, does that make sense? And you probably wouldn't want to have them on the same CPUs. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one worker on one. So we could actually do that actually, hold on. I'm just gonna hard code this. zero on here, I'll just do that one. Should work. And then we'll just put this one on CPU two. Oh, hold on. Like I said, when you start messing with CPUs, shut down bro first. Other than the CPUs though, you don't, have to do that. You don't have to get on the sensor and do anything. But if you just start tweaking CPUs, you want to probably be on that sensor and stop row. You let the puppet do its thing. That's the only issue I've ever, I, I really have. So our node config should be set up. Hey, it worked. So, see, puppet, oops. Let's see, node config, this is what it just made. So, puppet, puppet builds this whole file. So, so I have Roblox ETH0, Roblox ETH1, and just make sure if you're going to bind CPUs, just make sure you, I would probably bind them on different ones. You don't have to bind them. Anything else? Like I said, it's pretty powerful. Um, I know people use it. I have like 400 some downloads, I think. So, or they just download it and for no reason. But, um, yeah, if, and if you have any problems, um, I got my contact info here. Should uh So there's my Twitter. And whenever I update my puppet module, I always like to, I usually just tweet it and just say hey, my bro module has been updated. So if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know. Um, they don't really have like a subscribe to modules yet in the Puppet Forge, but there they are. Here's my GitHub. Um, I probably wouldn't download anything out of my GitHub because it's I usually just destroy it and uh, I would download my modules from the Puppet Forge. Because when I put them in the Puppet Forge, that means I think they're ready and I have a lot of, I mean, you can download my stuff out of GitHub, but take it at your own risk. So, all right. Anything else and no more questions? All right, thanks.